I know better than to ask you about how you're going to manage the room. What you're going to ask? No, I'm not. <laughs> Is this the deepest one you think you've ever had? Yeah, from top to bottom. Yeah. So that part has to be exciting for you to, to figure out how to, how to manage it. Like, I'm not, I don't know how you're going to do it, but like to think about how to use five guys. Is that daunting or is it exciting? Oh, it's exciting. I mean, it's great to have depth. Everybody wants depth. Everybody talks about having depth. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, you know, how, and how that gets dispersed and all yes, that, we'll figure Brian that out Williams as we go. Right. You know, we'll figure that out as we go. And um, But it's good to have depth. And it's good to have guys. And it's good to have good players and proven players. And, and again, how we manage it and how we get guys on the field, that'll, that'll, that'll play itself out. Is there any part of you that in this, like, Portal and NIL that were surprised in May that kept all five? You know, you know, some people may say yes. To some regard, I could probably say yeah. But I also think it comes back to the locker room. It comes back to the brotherhood. It comes back to the to the, to the love of one another that they have. And and I know it may sound like a cliche, but it's real. Why you say it's real? Because they're all still here. And and uh, it has nothing to do with Tony Alford and the coach. It has everything to do with the, the love of one another in that room. And, and, and I know we talk about that a lot, the brotherhood here, but it's real, and that's a, that's a testament. To it. Because they all had opportunities to go do other things in, in other facets, but they all decided to stay um, and, and, and stay together as a unit and stay bonded. So um, it's a testament to the type of kids that are in that room and the type of kids we have in the locker room. Tony, is also the fact that last year, by the end, you needed everybody. Yeah. And, and that shows. That's <clears throat> and, they, and they see that. I don't have to say it. They know that everyone's going to have an opportunity. Now, the, the, the key component is your opportunity to come exactly when you want it. But if you just stay the course, and I think that's the main thing in life, if you just stay the course, you'll get what's coming your way. And, it's, and, and the problem is everybody wants things that right now, they want instantaneous success, they want instantaneous whatever it is. And I think it's just a testament to say, just keep, just keep grinding and keep playing and keep doing your job to the fullest and being the best version of yourself every day. And when your time comes, you'll be ready to go. Tony, how was Troy? Troy was battling through that injury last year. It seemed like at times he might have been pressing a little bit, trying to do things. Do you have a conversation with him about, you know, making sure to... Uh, He's fine. Trey's fine. We're not talking about last year. Trey's fine. How does he look so far this year? Great. Great. First three days been good. <laughs> when you look at Trey this year, man managing, like he said, the five guys in the room, but, but knowing what you have in Trey, does that go into the equation at all, this this fall of, of managing how much you, each of those five guys get so you know that they're helping him in the season? Well, absolutely, but that's not just with him. That's everybody as far as pitch counts, if you will, like they do in baseball. It's just pitch counts in practice. One, to save, save legs and, and body and, and wear and turn the body, but also gets other guys reps. So everyone's going to get theirs. And, you know, when you have enough guys that, that uh, the depth we're talking about and everyone needs reps, that's going to automatically take care of the pitch count, if you will. And so... But yeah, we're very cognizant of that and how, how much how much wear and tear we're taking on the body throughout camp. Do you owe each of these guys an opportunity, or how do you look? Do at I them? owe? Yeah, this one. Yeah, <clears throat> that's the question. No, I don't. I mean, like you like you just pointed out, four of these guys played <clears throat> a lot. Oh, I don't think I, you know. I, I get your question, and I, and I guess I'm pausing because I I don't I don't I don't owe them anything. No, that's why I'm. You know, I'm, I think I that uh, you, you get what you deserve. Yeah, yeah, you get what you earn, and they've earned. In my eyes, they've earned an opportunity to to show themselves. They've earned an opportunity to get reps. It's not about owing anybody anything. They don't owe us. We don't owe them. It's all it, you get what you earn, and you earn it every single day by how you how you walk in this building, how you carry yourselves, really outside the building as well. You earn it how you sit in meetings and how attentive you are in meetings, um, how intentional you are about every single rep because every single rep matters. Rather it be a walkthrough rep, rather it be a rep in, in the meeting room, rather it be a, a, a game speed rep, rather it be a mental rep. Every single rep matters and you earn those. And, and, and so that's where you get reps. You, you do well on rep one, chances are you'll get a second or third rep. If you don't, then chances are you won't. And that, but that's the life that we live in. When you're in a game and, and you got Trevi on there and you got Maya in there and you've got Dallin and they're all healthy, Chip's there, Evan Pryor's back and stuff, what determines – because I would think all these guys are putting in the work. I mean, based on yeah, a lot of it's just a lot of it's feel, a lot of it's um, packaging, as far as uh, packaging, a lot of it's game situation. Um, and some guys may be more adept at pass pro versus others, depending upon what we're doing in the game. And maybe some guys may be better. Some will get caught in the situation you're in, and it's a temple. We can't get you out. Right. So that's why you're trying to develop their whole skill set as complete players. But um, a lot of us just feel the game and, and, and how it's going and 
No. Well, like you hit the word packaging. In other words, you, do, you, do you intentionally they'll look for ways to get them all Absolute, involved in some, absolutely. In some respect? What, absolutely. Is that, is that correct? Absolutely, you do. So, but that's not just running backs. That's receivers. You try to put guys in position to set them up for success and, and, and put them in situations where where they're doing things that they're that they're good at and, and have had success going to help the team. What's, what's their best, right? what's the best trade like, of them? Been like a few days out here, but you mentioned the trades look good. What's, what's he showing you that makes it uh, just, encouraging? Just his, just his energy level, and you can see his speed and his burst is back and his um, change of direction. And, and so he's looked really good the past three days. But, but again, two of those days are in short. So for running back playing around in shorts is uh, – what, what, what do you want to see when they, when you progress the pass from him? It's just the, the finishing runs, the physicality, some of that coming back. and um, But that'll all come. That's just playing ball. So he, he, he knows what we're looking for. For all five of those guys, what's their, what would you say their best traits are? Excuse me? Each of those five, what's their best yeah. trait? I don't get into that. They know what they are. We've talked about it. So, they know what they are. Well, Trey, you're, Trey, you're talking about uh, you know, getting him back involved and he looks really good. He was really excited to get back on the field. and was really excited almost, to get him back. Yeah, almost pushing to, to get there when it wasn't maybe as clear and he wanted to be on the field. How, how do you make sure that he's, when he, now that he is back, he's not trying to do too much. Just over excited. Yeah, I just, just, again, just let him play. And again, if we get to just back there, that pitch count again. You know, I'm not, you're not going to try a real, real, real guy back and say, well, don't finish a run because that's not what we do. You know, that is a four to six A to B. We can go finish plays, finish runs. and. And then when we feel like he's had enough, a particular rep or a particular set, then we pull him out. It's like anybody else. Amy, how are you doing? That competition that's created uh, doing that, how are you seeing that pay off? It makes everybody better, right? Competition makes everybody better. Um, because you know if you don't do the job, the next guy coming in is very, very, very capable of doing the job. And, and again, those reps matter. And what you put on tape is what it is. So if you're making mistakes and you're not doing well and the next guy is, well, then there's your opportunity. How is Evan Pryor looking Pryor. right been now? Great, been great he... coming back. And you've got to get him back in and don't just completely throw him into the wolves, if you will, right away. So there's going to be there's going to be a transitional period of, of building him back into it, which he's been good. And um, and he's, he's chomping a bit to continue to go and get more reps and, you know, kind of peeling that back a little bit, saying, okay, we just – you're gonna get yours. We gotta build it, not just all at once. Is that like is a stamina honey? thing, or is it just? No, it just, just yeah. It's they're just not putting too much on him right away, and, and just build him. It's early in camp, but we got a lot of time for that. Physically, is he 100 percent? Yeah, you feel like right now. And when did that kind of show up in your eyes? Uh, I'd probably say the middle of July. You know, the middle of July, where you kind of felt like, okay, you can kind of see him coming back. Is it fair to say y'all had some? Thoughts, some plans for him this time a year ago. Absolutely. Before. And how, how did that? I don't know. In your mind, it, when, when you lose a guy like that, what, what, what for you as a coach? I mean, well, is, I is mean, it taking you, like a weapon off the table. And well, yeah, it does, but but injuries are part of the game. And here's what I, you know, I, I tell my own sons this. You know, you, you play this game long enough, you're 100 percent certain to get something hurt. Something's going to happen to you, right? And um, and so it is. It's taking a weapon off the field, so to speak, but. But again, that's part of it, and, and it wasn't. I felt, I felt way worse for him than yeah. I did us. Yeah. You know, worried about his mental state and, and where he's at emotionally, and um, so that was my biggest concern. And not the injury itself, but go we'll fix the injury. But it was really more the mental capacity because you know you, these kids, um, these kids put their heart and soul into this thing, Tim, and yeah. um, this is a very, very, very important thing to them. Um, and so you want to make sure that. Um, that you're taking care of their mental state. I mean, were, there moment, were there moments he hasn't played football in four years? I mean, it, it, so it, how is his mental? Well, I think he's got to go out and do it. You know, he ran a wheel route the other day, yesterday. It is the same play that he got hurt on. And so he runs it, he gets knocked down, he comes back, and he says, I'm good. And I, and I said, what do you mean you're good? He goes, you know, that was the same play I got hurt on. I said, yeah, I know. And it wasn't about catching it or not catching it. In his mind... It's like okay, I this is what I this is where I got hurt. I just did it and I'm good. So it, for him mentally, that helped validate. Okay, man, I'm back. And, and so that was good for him. And, and just to keeping him engaged, you know, just keeping him engaged with every single day when he knew he wasn't playing, but keeping him engaged in meetings, um, 
staying after him about everything else off the field as I would if you were in the room. So, um, so we were very intentional about that. But oh, so were the players. So you asked, why did he come back? Why did your room stay together? Because all the players were were helpful in his time off, if you will, or time away to keep him engaged and keep him fulfilled and and, and, and keep him a part of things. He's got this room of five guys. He's the one that's played the least, and he's in his third year. Yeah. Like, that's a very unique room yeah. at this point. Like, what have you seen from, from Evan specifically, just knowing that emotionally, mentally, he's there. Physically, it's easy. His mental state when he's in when he's in those meetings and he can answer and rip off the questions and the answers immediately. And um, that that shows he stayed he stayed engaged. Um, he's not he's never bitched, he's never moaned, he's never had a cross eye, a cross thing to say. He just keeps coming back saying, Give me more and um, so that's that just a testament to who he is as a young man. He's, 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 he's very valuable in, in a lot of different ways. Great. Yeah. Last question. 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 I don't. You don't? I'm not touching that one? I'm not okay, touching Mike. that one. Okay. Right. <laughs> I'm leaving that one alone. That Anybody else? Question. <laughs> I just want to listen in on that one. Uh, <laughs> Is there a mental hurdle for Trayvon to get you know, injury to? Or is he no, I think he's good. Yeah, he's